Hey everyone, it's Randy from Dreaming Bohemian and I'm coming on today and just to show you the cutest little journal ever. I found this, these instructions for this journal in a Somerset Studio magazine and I was going back through some old magazines just looking at them and in this episode, episode in this, um, <laughs> let's see, the 2019 May, June, July publication of Somerset Studio this cute little journal is in there and um i just fell in love with it i think i got the wrong page so it's on page 20 through 24 it's pretty in petals number and alphabet books by christina roth and look how beautiful that is so i wanted to try my hand at making one here's her finished product one here so one she has goes this way and then one she one one goes uh, horizontal and one goes vertical, and the one that I did I did uh, vertical. I think hers might be a little bit bigger, but um, I did mine really small. I just cut my index cards in half. So I wanted to show you how to do this really beautiful journal. The thing that I'm not going to do that she did is she called it uh, number and alphabet books, pretty in petals, and. I kind of renamed it pretty in past, pretty pastels because all of these letters here she did with some actual flowers that fall off of a tree near her. Um, let's see what but what it is. She says that in California she lived in a yard with mature bushes and trees and these razzleberry blossoms scattered on the black patio and she got the idea to form them into letters and take pictures of them. So we're not going to do that. I don't have any razzle berry blooms. Um, for one thing, it's January. It's winter time. I'm in North Carolina and there are just no flowers around. But um, I just kind of want to do my own take on that as well. And so if you want to follow along, it's so easy. I think anybody can do this. I've got cards at various stages here that I'll show you. So I'm about halfway done with one that I started last night. And then I've got to finish one here. And so I'll, I'll go through all the steps with you, but I just want to, um, so I want to show them to you, but I don't, don't want to make you sit and watch me do the same thing to every card. Not that it's that many, but so the supplies that you're going to need are, she did hers on old postcards and I have some old postcards, but none that I really didn't like so much that I wanted to paint over them. So I bought a while back on Amazon some card stock index cards because we were doing our index card challenge in the group Boho Daydreams last year. We did 52 uh, weeks of index cards. And so I had these and I had some left over because I think you get a hundred um, and it's nice thick card stock. So that's what I have done mine on. So you could use regular card stock and cut it down into three by five um, size or you know, really, you could do this any size you want. I just like the smallness of it, so I, I kept with the index card size. And I, you know, um, I don't think I have a postcard handy to see if these are postcard size or not. I, I, I don't know if they are. But you could use that as well, if, like you have some, you know, not so attractive postcards. So you're going to need some acrylic paints and pastels. Some decoupage medium and I'm going to use Liquitex matte gel and I have some of this matte fluid medium by Liquitex that I usually do my napkins with but it can be done with this too. Um, you could use Mod Podge or anything that you know you have as a um, as a decoupage medium. So gesso you'll need some white gesso you're going to need a hole punch and some rings. And I think that's the one thing that I didn't bring to my table was my rings. I might have to find those. Um, paint brushes. Um, just need a couple of those and a palette knife. Scissors. Um, miscellaneous fabric and trims. And I'll show you. I used mostly pink and blue on these. But I used some embroidery from linens like that's some tatting on there so I use the edges of that uh, let's see what else we got here <clears throat> there's some crochet there's some lace here 
I added a little bit of sorry tr trim piece here, just a little piece that I cut out. This is some, um, oh gosh, what is that called? I can't think of the name of it. The a chenille. Um, so whatever you have, this is just some gold fabric lacy stuff that I had that I've layered up. So whatever you want to use, this is what I'm going to use for this one because I decided I wanted to do blue instead of pink. So these are kind of the things that I have pulled out for that. This is what I used the last time here. And so you can see I've got some gold trim here from Sheila's Bundles. And I still have some of that tatting, some of that chenille bedspread, and some lace. So I <clears throat> just plan on incorporating, you know, whatever kind of feels good at the time when we do our embellishing. Um, paper napkins. So what I have decoupaged with, I'll show you on here, is just napkins. Um, right there, all of that is, is napkins. And so I just picked out a couple ahead of time that I liked the flowers on and did that. And I kind of tried to keep with the color palette that she had chosen on hers, which was um, more of the pinks. So I did that on there. And I'm going to do blue on this one. So you can see that I did the blue napkins on here. So I thought that turned out really pretty. And then um, you're going to need some various papers just to give it a little bit of background. And then we're going to gesso over that. It's very simple. You could use all book pages if you wanted to. I just had some ledger here and some music papers. Um, and I have a little bit of, oops, there went my light. I have some, um, I put together these little collage packs and I just kind of randomly pull from it depending on what, what I need at the time. And this has some book pages in it that I will use. <clears throat> And then I've got these letter stamps that I'm going to use, and I'll, I'll show you how to do that. So here's one of them. I just, I really liked the, the letters that she did in hers, but since I didn't have the ability to take the pictures of the flower letters that she arranged, I just did whatever I had. And so you can use whatever stamps you have. I just happened to have some letters and numbers, and they were kind of large. The other ones I had were really small and they wouldn't have really shown up. So I just went ahead with the large. So I've got my archival ink here that I'm just going to use kind of as a, an outline for the stamp. So I'm going to um, stamp those, take a letter, put it on my block, stamp it, and then paint over it because my archival ink is not real dark and, and I wanted it to be really dark. And I had some black paint, so that's just kind of my take on that. <clears throat> the instructions are really easy, uh, and I'll go through that here with you and show you how to do everything. And let's get started. Okay, I went really quickly to go find my rings. So I ordered these on Amazon, and they're one and a half inch rings. And I thought maybe they were going to be too big. But they turned out pretty well for the size, I thought, because it lets everything move freely. Um, and it gives you some room to put some ribbons on here. So I thought that size worked really well. So I'm just going to grab a couple of those real quick. And get in here. And the way that I started doing my cards, I went ahead and laid it out for the vertical version that she did. I wish I had thought ahead and done the um, horizontal. I think that would be cute too, but I guess I could go over this a little more with gesso if I wanted to and cover up some of the words so it wouldn't look silly, but anyway. So I'll flip through this one really quickly. So here's the pink. I love the way it turned out. And I say pink because it has the napkin accents are pink. And I put these ribbons over here that are pink. So it's got multiple pastel colors in here. But I still think the main color is pink. So these are just fun. Um, you know, my husband thought that they would be really cute with a Bible verse in them. Just, you know, a Bible verse per page. Or you could put little tiny pictures in there. 
My daughter has one of those Polaroid cameras and they're really small uh, pictures and I, I thought that might fit in here, but I haven't tried it yet, but I really think that would be some cute pictures in there. So all in all, I used 12 index cards and then cut them in half. So that was 24 actual pages. And then it gives you, you know, front and back 48. And that is plenty for this. It, the more you put on here, the wider the mouth gets. And so I'm not sure you'd want to go much more than that. But I guess you could do it all the way around the ring if you really wanted to. But this was just so fun and it came together so fast. I, I really, really liked it. So, so I'm going to go ahead and get started here. I'm trying not to take too awfully long. Oh, I keep hitting my light. Let's see. There we go. <laughs> it's dark. It's nighttime, so I'm not going to be able to work without that light at all. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get my gesso. I've already done these. So I did these last night just to kind of get ahead in the process. I actually put some wallpaper, some textured wallpaper on this, I thought, for something different. And you can really use whatever you want. But I, like I said, I wanted to stay as close to her original as I could. Most of these I have gesso and everything on. I'm just going to grab the ones that I didn't have completely finished. Look at how that blue turned out so pretty. All right, and here's some with paint on them. And then here's one that we're going to do from the beginning. <clears throat> All right, so these are basically finished. These need gesso. These have paint and nothing else. And then we'll, we'll just start here. So let me, let me get it out of the way here. Okay. So for your gesso, you're going to put it on pretty liberally because you want that paint to mix in with the gesso. I probably should have gotten something to lay behind this. Let's see what I have. I have some parchment paper, but it's so big. Uh, I'll just wipe it up. I don't feel like looking for something. I thought about that before I started and I thought, well, I'm just gonna go for it. Now you are gonna get your hands messy, so if you don't want paint on your hands, Go ahead and put some gloves on. I'm probably going to have to use my, um, my little dryer, my little heat gun during some of this. So if you don't like that noise, I apologize, but um, I don't think I can get around it. So that is the gesso. And then I'm just going to pick a color. I think I'm going to use this Desert Sky. Normally I have a smaller paintbrush. I left all my paintbrushes downstairs. I'm like just not prepared at all. So I think I'm just going to set that down. Use that just for just so and then we'll use this one for paint. You don't need much. I might have to get some more but this might be plenty. And I'm just going to cover that card with that paint. So give me a little bit more on this side. But you don't want it to be too dark, and you want the gesso to shine through. And then when it dries, it's a, even a little bit lighter. So there's no, I don't know, thinking about it, I guess you could say. You just kind of slap it on there and let it dry. So while that is drying, I am going to get one that I already have paint on and show you the next step. So cover card with gesso, cover card with paint. Now you can place your papers on there at this time too while it's wet. So I will show you really quickly. That will stick. And I just kind of lay it down. You can't do a napkin because it's gonna you're going to have to decoupage it on there. But you can put some papers on there. So I'm just going to put that on there for now. Let's see, do I want anything else? I might do a little bit of this ledger. And I'm just tearing. It doesn't matter what it looks like at all. I'm just going to put that over here. Okay. 
you could put bigger pieces um, and gesso over that, you know, whatever you want to do. It's probably going to dry pretty fast if you don't put too much of anything on there. So we'll let that sit over here for a minute. So here's one that I've already got painted on both sides, gesso and painted. And so we're going to take um, our napkin and our paper. And this is if you didn't put it in the paper, put it while your paper was, uh, your paint was wet. I can't talk tonight. So maybe I'll do a little book page on this one. And then I'm going to get my, I think I'm going to save that for the napkins. I'm going to use this um, matte gel, Liquitex. Get a different paintbrush for that. And then I don't put the paper in the same places on all of them. I put them in different places. So let's do this. And then just go over the top with that as well. Get some of that paint off. There we go. And I'll put this one right here. Usually I don't have that much paper on there. I'll do this. And we'll go this way with that one. That's part of the beauty of this project is it's just so, I don't know, you, it's not precise at all and you can just have fun with it. And if you need a little gift and you need it quick, you can do this really in one day. All right, so I'll let that dry. I could probably do the napkin too on there. Let's see. I had some pieces already cut out, but I think I've got enough of the wallpaper, so I'm not sure I'm going to use that. And I tried a couple different napkins. This one had some birds on it. I thought that would be cute, but they didn't turn out as good as I thought they would. And then I tried this and that didn't turn out as well as I thought it would. And so I'm just going to stick with, with this one. It, um, it showed up the best. So I usually take a wet paintbrush and go around, but this napkin tears pretty good. And so I'm just going to go ahead and do some tearing. And like I said, you can use this or the liquid or the fluid medium for the napkins. I just happen to have this out, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this. I do try to put the napkin close to something else that I have laid down. I'm not sure why, I just like the layered look. So I think that's all I'm gonna do for that. And then we'll do our stamp here. So I'm going to let that dry, and then we'll move on to this one. I'll do a blue one. Look how gorgeous that looks. Isn't that really pretty? Make sure I'm in frame here. Okay, great. And use the rest of this book page. We are supposed to get some wintry weather mix here on Sunday where we are in North Carolina and I know a lot of you have gotten snow and weather where you are out west and up north and such. We don't usually get that much here but every now and again we'll have a, a crazy winter and I don't know if there's a wives tale about it um, but our acorns fell super hard last year, not this year, but last year. And we didn't have a hard winter last year. It was pretty mild. And so this year we didn't get as many acorns and now it looks like we're going to have a hard winter. So we really thought last year that we were going to get the hard winter because of all those acorns. But I guess that doesn't mean a darn thing <laughs> when it comes to the weather. Because, you know, you would think the animals would be stocking up the squirrels and chipmunks. And we have a lot of deer around here, and so they love the acorns. 
So we thought we'd maybe stockpile in their winter fat. But that didn't happen. And then here we are in early January getting some snow. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of weather we have. All right, this one is dry. So I'm going to go ahead and put a napkin on there. I like the kind of snow that um, it comes... And it goes. And that's the kind of snow I like. <laughs> I don't like it to stick around for any length of time. Because I'm not really a cold weather person. So, I'm not looking forward to this. But Monday we are off work for MLK Day. So, it'll be good that I don't have to try to work from home or fight the weather on Monday. So, hopefully it'll be gone by Tuesday. I just love that blue on blue. Which I didn't really think I was going to like at first, but I really do. So I didn't go over the top of these because I was waiting on that bottom layer to dry. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now just to get it to stay on. And you don't really have to coat these in anything because we're going to gesso over the top of that and kind of um, get these blended into the back, these pieces of the paper and such. <clears throat> so I have one more here. Let's see. Oh, I covered up all my paper. So you can see how fast this is going and how easy it is. Oh, sorry. You can't see what I'm doing, can you? Mm, this was um, a typing book. So I think I'm just going to... It was like practice for typing. This piece is. And I like how it has like typewriter font. Sometimes I go right in the middle because we're going to cut these in half, remember. And so part of it will be on that side and part of it will be on this side. I might just do another one. Because it doesn't matter. I'm always thinking, though, where I'm going to put, um, you know, my letter stamp but I'm not going to do it on all of them either so you can take up more than you know so like this I probably wouldn't put a stamp on because it's not going to stamp well and then this I mean I could put one there but I might just leave it just like that where was I going with this <laughs> I don't remember I think I was in the middle here One on both sides. Put something on the edge, maybe. Over there. Oh, yes, that will be so pretty. am careful with my napkins um this process isn't too hard on them but i kind of start in the middle and go out to hopefully not get any air bubbles some wrinkles there but it's okay um if you don't have any of this liquitex um you know, or anything like that, you you can put this on with glue stick. You can make your own Mod Podge with um, PVA glue and water, um, equal parts. So you don't have to go out and, you know, buy something like this if you don't have it. All right. Let me dry it. Not quite. All right, what was I doing here? Oh, those were done. These need a gesso. Okay. So while those dry, we'll do some gessoing here. And I think I'm going to use my palette knife. So there's two ways you can do this. You can take your um, paintbrush and spread some gesso. 
there's you know a couple of different effects we could do here and I'll show you both so the first one is just to get some gesso on your paintbrush and then let's see which one do I want to do we'll do this one this is not one of my favorite ones and then you can take your brush and lightly go over And you can see how that's putting a layer of gesso on there. You can be more random. You can put more on there. Oh, did you see that? My paintbrush broke. <laughs> Dang, what the heck? I could be more easy with this. I'm going to have to um, Gorilla Super Glue this in there. And I know that Gorilla Super Glue works. Because Sheila glued her fingers and some beads together. So <laughs> we know it works. All right, I'm going to have to be a little more ginger. All right, so that's another way, or one way to do that. I can't get over that paintbrush. These must have been cheap. Or you can take your palette knife and kind of scoop up a little bit. And I just kind of knock it off on the side there. So I don't have too much. And then, I hope I was in frame. Just lightly graze the palette knife over. You can even scrape some off. And then just go back over it. Uh, and it gives you a totally different effect. The more gunk you have on your palette knife, I find the more interesting it makes it. So <laughs> I'm not worried about my gunk. Every now and then I clean it off. just want to push that paper to the back then I put more on it <clears throat> and I think I'm going to do the same thing to that one that we just did I tried this that green napkin this one on there and I didn't like it at all so then I put this napkin on there and um, I think we're going to end up with a letter there that's all I got to say <laughs> All right, so that needs to dry. That needs to dry. There's some more. See how that's just random? I really like that effect. Okay. Keep going. The good thing about this too is like these kind of they let you get the warps out if you get too much liquid on them because the paint kind of softens up the paper or makes it more movable, bendable, I guess you could say. I think I need to get me some more gesso though. See, there's, there's that green. It's not too awfully bad, but look how much better that looks. Just, I really am digging this blue. I, you know, I waffle back and forth between pink and blue being my favorite color. I can't ever decide which one because I like them both so much. Do gravitate towards blue a lot though. And you can put as little as much on, on there as you want. You just kind of have to figure out what you like. One thing that I thought would be um, really pretty on these would be some gold. Um, what do you call that stuff? It's the paper, the gold. Blah, blah. Hmm. You know what I'm talking about. I know you're saying it right now. It's little thin sheets of gold. And then you put some glue down and then you press the um, paper on it and it sticks and it's gold. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what happens when you get on YouTube and you can't find your words, but that's exactly what just happened. Okay. So those are still a little bit wet. 
think I'm going to dry those really quickly. So, excuse me, I'm going to be of this done. I normally wouldn't have done that before I did the other side. Oh, look. Yay! I forgot I had already done that. All right, so those look good. Gesso dries fast, but it also doesn't really matter if little specks of gesso get on the other side because it's already got gesso on it. If you are worried about me putting them on top of each other, they're, they're fine. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and paint this side. Obviously using a different paintbrush. Um, let me get the gesso first. Excuse my arm. All right. Like I said, I'm not usually using this big of a brush, but I left my other one downstairs. doesn't matter if there's, you know, crud in it. The more texture on these, I think the better they look. All right. And then I will do a pink since we did a blue. Let's use this blush pink. Oh, you know what? I think I'm going to use this other blue. Um, this blue kind of gives it a little bit of pop in the color. Is this metallic? Yep, that's metallic. That's okay. It'll be a little bit darker, but we'll be fine. I'm always just so over it if it's too dark, but it needs some sort of something. You know, a little accent. I like that. Okay. All right. So we'll let this one dry. So see, there's only like nine steps to this. Right now we are, we've gone one through five. And so I'm just going to finish up these. But I really wanted you to see all the steps and how easy it is. Because initially when I saw this, I wasn't sure about it truly. Okay. I, I love that blue. It's very pretty. Okay, so let us get some more napkins torn here. I'm trying to think of that. <laughs> the name of that. It's Gold Flake. Is it Gold Flakes? What the heck is it? That's going to drive me insane. Gold something. I don't know. Or I also have some gold metallic paint that could be pretty too around the edges or sporadically or whatever you don't have to follow the exact same thing that I'm doing just get crazy with it Okay, have the napkins, we'll travel, have music, we'll travel, get some of this, put that away, and then two, Three, four. Okay. Good enough. I'll let the ticks out and go to town. I did 
do use a little more um, with the paper like this because it's this is really old paper and it doesn't glue doesn't really soak through very well <clears throat> I don't know what it is about that old paper. It's, I just don't make paper like that anymore. This is some really old music paper too. Now I'm gonna scare napkin. Might as well go in the middle. Actually, I don't know that I want to go in the middle because that's gonna get cut. We'll go this way. So pretty. I think I want like a corner piece down here too. down here there we go oops I didn't get some under there if you don't get this stuff under the napkin it will not stick for love nor money nope will not happen a little much there and here's another thing if you mess up on your napkin let's say right now I really didn't like that napkin I could take this it's just a wet wipe and I could wipe that napkin off while it's still wet and it would be like it never happened so that's a good little trick to know These do stick together a little bit, I noticed, when I was done, and so I thought I might go back with some fine grit sandpaper and see if I could get them to kind of not stick together. I thought the gesso would help it, but um, I might have Liquitex over the gesso on those. I don't remember and thinking that I needed to seal it, but I probably really didn't. lighting is okay. I seem to be darker on this side because my light is better on that side. I think I need to get one more light for that to work out better. Let me see if I can turn this light on. Excuse the little jiggle here. Let's see. There we go. Okay. Trying to make it stop wiggling. Okay. Snapping. Where do I want to go? I could do that one in the middle. That could be cut off. And that would be perfectly fine. Some on both sides. Their napkin is a little bit more of a challenge. So I have historically put my napkins on with um, a glue stick and then gone over them with, um, what do you call it, a flat iron? <laughs> because that will seal that glue in. It'll melt it and seal it. But with everything else on here, I'm... I'm not going to do that on these. It, it would be good because this is a nice small size otherwise, but 
not with everything else on there, I don't think. This is a beautiful color. Um, it's this powder blue. I'm almost out of it and I can't find it anywhere. I need to go make a trip to Michael's and see if I can find it again. I sent my husband last time and they did not have it. It's just a really soft color. It reminds me of a soft robin's egg blue. And I haven't been able to find that either. I ordered this. It's the Apple Barrel Key West, but it's a lot more green than that. It's more like that. It's more like a turquoise almost. I don't know why I did the napkin first, but I did. I don't know why I'm talking funny, but I am. <sighs> it's just a loopy, maybe. I don't know. Loopy, loopy, dreading the weather. And maybe I'll go down that way with this. Hopefully my camera is not shaking because I'm making my camera, my table shake, I mean. That kind of makes me crazy when I watch it back to make sure everything did okay. Make sure I'm still in frame after I jiggled. Yep, okay. Boy, how long are we going? 49 minutes. Time just flies, man. Okay, I thought this was going to be so fast. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Get a little bit on here. I think I have my gesso down pat more on on that one. Keep kind of putting things in the same place, but it's okay. Oh, well, we'll just leave that. Hers is way random on hers. Like, she's got it everywhere. I don't know. I just, I didn't, I think mine is smaller, and so that why, that's why I just stayed with a, a couple pieces. Okay, I just used all my napkin. Where do I'm going to go with this? Part of this napkin has got little bumps in it, and part of it's really smooth on the inside, and I, li I like the smooth on the inside better, but this is what we got to work with right now. I'm going to make this a little random on the edge more so. Where am I going to go here? I will do that right in the middle. That would be amazing. I have to lock my little doggy out. He, um, Sometimes I sit up here and I craft and I have snacks and so every time I come in here he thinks there's snacks. <laughs> so he's bugging the fire out of me to get his little snacks. So I either had to bring snacks with him and feed the little snack monster the whole time or I just have to put him out. So tonight I just put him out because he started doing his little give me a snack mom like whiny thing i was like oh no 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 you are not going to be whining through my whole video 
So I wonder, I wonder, should I do this, y'all? Should I do it with the gold? There it is. This is multi purpose baby wipe. <laughs> wipe your hands and wipe your brush. Um, what was I doing? Oh yeah. <laughs> I get so sidetracked. Alright, so what should I do? on there. Blue on here. It's got that medium on it. Matte gel. Ooh, I like that. You know, like, once it gets flowing, I just kind of go overboard with it, so I don't want to do that. Oh, I like, oh, I like that. Oh, I like, oh my gosh, I like that so much. Yeah. don't really want to go back and do the whole thing. Maybe I'll do that afterwards. <laughs> Let's try a pink one. Oh my goodness. This is, um... Craft Smart Gold Ore Premium Metallic, if you want to know what this is. Okay, this has got gesso on it, so I'm curious to see. Oh yeah, that shows up nicely. Oh, I like that little bit on the uh. edge. Oh, did you hear my husband sneeze? Y'all, he sneezes like a freight train. I, uh, he scares the crap out of me sometimes, like, for real. I'm like, could you please just, just give me a little warning, like anything? <laughs> he never does. It even scares the dog. I don't like that as much on there. I think I got too much. Me and Oliver, that's my dog. We just look at each other like, oh, what just happened when he sneezes? I know y'all heard that. Don't act like you didn't. <laughs> Get near through this door. Okay, that kind of looks yellow, doesn't it? Oh, well. We tried. It looked better on the blue. It, it looks really good on this dark blue. All right. <clears throat> So that could be a fail. Just might might be a fail. Um, okay, we're still wet here. So I'm going to dry these. And then we're almost done, guys. So these need some gesso. That'll dry quick enough. While we're waiting on this to dry, we're going to start cutting those. You can do them without this gesso too. Um, you don't have to use it if you like a more of a clean look. I just love the texture of it. Oh, I forgot the initials. Shoot, I haven't done that yet. I probably shouldn't have done the gesso. It'll be fun. We're just going to wing it. Clearly, we're winging it. If I don't do tutorials, y'all. This is like, craft with me at your own risk. Okay? That's what I should call my videos. Okay. I'm going to set these over here. Put that thing away. 
And then this way. Wrong lid. Liquitex. Yeah, I don't need that anymore. I don't need that, but I do need the black and this and this and this. Not really sure if that was dry yet. Okay. Alrighty. Oh, I hope my very small brush is here. Yikes. Do I have another? Please say I have another. Hmm. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, this is a good one. Okay. It'll be fine. I can wash it. All right. So we're just going to pick some random letters. Let's do the N. Or not a tutorial. I don't know. Okay. And let's pick us a card. And it's probably not going to work on there. Yeah, that would be good there. All right. So I, I tried to re-ink my archival ink. And for some reason, the ink didn't take very good. I think I just need to get a new one. Um, that was upside down. So I'm just going to do an outline of the stamp like that. And then I'm going to paint it paint over it. And it's, um, it's not super tedious, but it does take a little bit of time. And you have to be, you know, precise on this part. As much as you can. First tried it. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to stay in the lines, but with the right paintbrush, you can do a pretty good job. This is a little thin here, but that's okay. It might not look super perfect, but it's going to look pretty darn close. Go slow and take your time. Don't stick your fingers in it or your hand. I'm trying to get the little gloppies off too. Gloppies. You think that's a real word? Gloppy. Glob. Gloppies. Whatever. Glob. Glob is a word, right? Glob of paint. Glob. Glob. I don't know. All right, so that one's not perfect right there, so I'm just going to go and straighten that out a little bit. Straighten this out a little bit, maybe. Possibly. There we go. Ta-da! See? Not horrible. Not horrible at all. And look how pretty that looks. Mm-hmm. I like it. Okay. I like the way that one looks. I wasn't sure I was going to like that. Wasn't. What am I saying? I wasn't sure I was going to like that at first. That one's got the blue napkin behind it, and then I put some blue over it too, but I think that looks good. All right, so I'm going to do a letter here. I'm going to think I'm going to do a skinny letter. Uh, do a J, maybe. J for just winging it. Don't like 
and the ink gets on the edges. So I was just getting that off. Mr. J right there. See, it doesn't look that fabulous when you do it like that, but as soon as you put that paint on there and it pops, it looks great. Have like little hairs sticking out that I don't like. I hope you can't see my face like <laughs> trying to paint. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, good enough. J. Better not get that anywhere close to that die. Um, let's see. Maybe something there. What shall we do? A Q. Yes, I like the Q. Love this little bitty acrylic block with these letters. It works perfectly. It doesn't look like it's picking up any ink, but it is. Card brought to you by the letter Q. Q. Alright, I'm gonna try to get some more paint on here and get those little tiny hair pieces. Ooh, I see one. You know what? I'm just gonna cut that jerker off. Dang eyelash sticking out. Okay. Check. Oh, I see another one. Dang it. Oh, well. Hopefully, I know Galabi will be good with it. I clearly can go around the corner better than I can in a straight line. My driver's ed teacher told me that, too. When I swerved in the road for a turtle, he said, don't do that. You'll kill us all. I didn't kill anybody or the turtle. I thought I did a good job. 